Happy Sunday everyone and welcome to the first in a little series of embroideries that I'm going to be doing on a Sunday. Not necessarily consecutive weeks but this is the first of them. I'm really pleased with this brimstone moth. I'm actually matching it. <laughs> that's, that's just by coincidence. Um, I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. And I hope you're going to enjoy watching me stitch it. I should just cut you straight into it. Um, I'm lucky I've got two lovely books on British moths and that's because I used to do moth trapping every week uh, when I managed a nature reserve. But there are so many resources online so if you don't want to do the same moth as me or you're in a different country you want to do your local moths just have a look around there, there will be some beautiful photographs that you can get access to. Anyway, today I'm going to be doing this moth, which is a brimstone, this one here. And brimstone is very common in the UK. It flies April to October um, in woods, hedges, gardens, scrubs, heaths and downs. It has uh, three broods in the south and one brood in the north. It's really pretty and it's an acid yellow, which I thought was really nice to start off with. So I have that book. Uh, and in this book, which has paintings of moths, because it's a bit easier to identify them sometimes with their paintings, there it is there. And that's life size. So obviously I didn't want to do it as small as that. I'm doing it on a background of this Irish linen, which is 32 count Irish linen. It, it was the, the fabric I used to stitch my children's portraits on years ago, and I've never used the rest of it. You can see I'm hooped up because it's, uh, I think this type of embroidery is easier in the hoop and I'm not cutting my excess off because at the moment I'm not sure how I'm going to display them. It may be that I want all of the moths on one big piece that I can frame as a whole or it may be that I'll cut them out but because I don't know yet I'm not willing to cut my fabric and waste it. So this is the size that I've drawn out, you can see that. So I've drawn that as my own pattern for the size that I'm going to do. I've cut out, I've sort of, I've drawn out the shapes of the wings. That's the under wing and that's the over wing. So they'll be my pieces that I'll need to cut out of fabric. I've got this piece of cream linen, sorry, cream silk off an old blouse. You can see how marked it was. That may be able to be painted up. This is silk that I got from a from a junk shop actually. It was just in a pile with some rubbish and I bought a whole big piece of it. That actually might work well because the weave on that I think would look nice as on the wings for some texture. But it's the wrong colour so I need to paint that up. I thought this yellow would be fine but it's just not the same colour. I need more of an acid yellow. And then I've got some rust dyed pieces that I may well use as well for the little brown bits in the wing. I'm going to get my ink tents and my acrylic paints and show you both ways because I don't want anybody to feel they have to go out and buy anything if they don't have to. Okay, I've got set up just to paint a bit of fabric. I'm actually just using an old piece of greaseproof paper that I've used before to paint on. And I'm going to do both these pieces of fabric. And first off, I'm going to use my ink tents. I'm going to wet the fabric first, just with some plain water. And I'm wetting the fabric because I do not want any hard lines on this. So this is to do the ink tents first, which I do love. But before I had them, I did use to use acrylic paint successfully. And because I don't want anybody to think that I'm making you go out and buy expensive things because they're not particularly cheap. They are beautiful, but they're, they're, they are an investment if you're not going to be using them a lot. Um, cheap acrylic paint, the sort that you'd get to, I don't know, paint some furniture, give to the children, that will be just as good. It's different. The, the Ink Tense has a lovely vibrancy. But you will have to, you will just be able to get a good effect. I'm going to pick up this one here and I'm just going to pick it I'm just going to use my ink tense tin like a palette. Oh, that's quite bright actually. It is on the right spectrum of the colour. I think maybe I don't quite want quite that acid yellow. 
and it will be it will dry lighter but I'm going to use this other yellow beside it I think to just mute that colour down I think that's more like it actually what beautiful colour for a moth I used to absolutely love moth trapping but they're so beautiful they're just like butterflies in fact there's so many more moths than there are butterflies some of them are just as big and they're definitely just as beautiful if not more so well that's definitely enough to get the wings out of so I'll count that bit as done I'll paint this bit of silk as well try this colour by itself actually I think that is the colour and I'll just dry these with the hair dryer so that I can carry on with them straight away however let's see if I can do the same thing with the paint so for the paint I've got an old saucer that I use as a paint palette I've got two little bottles here this one's nearly empty and that's just sort of it says avocado on there but you can see it's a very pale green and then I've got this one here that says canary yellow it's on here won't need very much and then because I feel it's a bit of an acid yellow I'm just going to see if I've got enough in this to put a bit of green down maybe I don't oh yes I do okay I just feel that little bit of green will alter the yellow enough so to paint the fabric with acrylics you really just need a watery wash so as you can see I'm just making sure that that's quite a watery paint and this time I'm not going to wet the fabric first because there's enough water on here and as you can see that's just going on perfectly in fact it's hard to find the difference I've actually never done them together before I'll see if there's any difference once they're dry but I would suspect there isn't so I'll keep them in the same plane so I know when they're dry which ones acrylics and which ones ink tents the trick to a the trick to painting fabric with acrylics is to make sure you're putting it on like a wash. So plenty water. You don't want a layer of paint on top of the fabric, you want it to soak in. There it is. Just paint it right down here. Plenty water. Make sure it's soaking in. And I'm going to dry these up with the hairdryer and get a start. I'm doing my clearing up and I thought I'd just show you this is how my paint cloths get all bunny colours. It's because I'm just clearing up the excess off my paper. I've cleared it up off my little thing, my little saucer. And so now I've got a new paint cloth going with some nice acid yellow paint on it. And I just let that dry in. But it just means... I feel as if I'm using everything to the absolute nth degree that I can possibly use it so that even the paint water doesn't get wasted. Before I cut out my wings I just thought I'd show you the dry fabrics now. So this is the ink tense part, this is the acrylic paint. In looks there is no difference. I, I feel I made the colour almost a perfect match for the ink tense. The intense part is very soft still. The fabric is exactly what the fabric was before. The acrylic paint one, there's a slight stiffness there that wasn't before. Not enough to make any difference to what I'm doing of, of the stitching. And actually it could be a help to have that slight stiffness in the fabric that wasn't there before. And on this piece of silk blouse, this is the intense bit. And this is the acrylic paint bit. And the only difference I can feel is, in fact, the stiffness is hardly there at all. In fact, as I'm crumpling it in my hands, it's even going away. And so I don't think there's any difference on here between the ink tents and the acrylic paint. Ever so slightly, ever so slightly, 
a slightly stiffer feel to the fabric but it wouldn't stop you crafting with it sewing with it um, and definitely doesn't make any difference to me in what I'm doing that's just a tip to show that a cheap acrylic paint can work well just make sure that it's watery when you're putting it on you want it to soak into the fabric and not stand on top I've cut my wings out I've decided to cut the under wings from the silk blouse and I cut, I cut the top wings out of the other type of silk I thought the lines would look nice so I'll leave them there for the moment while I get these bottom ones on and I'm choosing to take a piece out of my uh, thread trays and it's actually out of the green section it's this very very pale uh, greeny yellow and I'm only going to use one thread so I want these to be quite fine like that and I'll just keep this to one side while I'm working on it the excess once I'm finished will just go on top of the tangle but for the moment I'll keep it out so they're just going to lie in there, one on top of the other, and come up. And this is mainly going to be hidden. So I am just going to running stitch them on. I feel as if the, the moths are going to be a good candidate for showing some stump work because I can put the bottom wings onto the material, the base, but I could make the top wings as something entirely separate. That's not what I'm going to do today, but I feel as if it'll definitely come in the future. Now what these underwings do have is a sort of a fringe along the bottom, and the fringe is very, very pale, and then it has little rusty bits in. So I'm actually going to come up off the fabric and go down onto it because it's easier for the silk. I'm just going to put some little stitches right along this bottom edge. You might do more but I'd rather just go in one or two passes. I always feel it's easier to go loosely along something and then come back to thicken it up because then you can stop at any time once you feel there's enough and also if you run out of thread a new thread is more easily camouflaged by going in among the ones you've already got also not all of my moths might be down on the down on a base fabric I have a feeling I'd quite like to do a moth brooch but I have to start somewhere and today it's the brimstone moth on the backing fabric. It's easier to come up off the, on the background fabric and go down into my silk. Otherwise the silk is going to get pushed up all the time. As long as I make the little fringe even all the way along just come up and leave that thread hanging because I don't like to finish off if I don't have to and I might need that that might be the perfect place for the top wing so I'm going to get the rusty coloured thread to do the patches I think it's going to be this lovely one here and I still think I'm going to just use one strand so this is lovely rusty brown and I need to get some little markings on here I think I just need two or three stitches just to suggest that they're there. That's one. And hop along a little bit. They're not quite little squares on the real moth, but I feel as if just getting the marks on like that in among this fringe is enough to show that it's the brimstone moth. I think that's it for that bit and I need to go on to the other side. I still only need to show three markings here because the overwing is going to actually cover them up. Thank you by the way for all your comments you've made on my first week of the stitch journal. 
I really appreciate it. It was lovely to see comments from real beginners as well who are just starting out on a stitching journey. That's really cool that you can use use your new experience to just make something beautiful as a fabric book. So thank you everybody. I really appreciate reading all your comments. If I lay my top wings in, now I need to sort out what I'm doing with the top of the body and I feel as if I need to do a little bit of raised up stump work there. A bit of the silk that I've cut off that's maybe not much use for other things. And I'll just so it's just the it's just the bits that are gonna fray up. It actually has got quite a furry body, so I think if I fray them especially it could be quite good. In fact, it's looking better and better. I'm just going to get them all scrumbled up. Yes, okay, so that's definitely what I'm doing. I'll get a new piece of yellow, yellowy green. Again, single thread. Just couch these bits of threads in and see if I can shape them. And every time I'm just going to think of the shape that I need and stitch down into this bundle of threads. I'm going to take that right the way down for his body. I'll just keep on laying in the straight stitches. In fact, this thread's almost that same colour. It's just worked out so well. Some, there's some brown to come into the edge of here, so I'll be able to sculpt it a bit more as I go. I actually think I'll do more of that sculpting when the wings are on but I'm happy that I've got a bit of a body going and so I've actually got something for the wings to go around one's there and the other one is here Right now I really need to be careful where I'm putting my stitches because these are where things are going to show. So I'm actually going to come down here with the lines of the veins of the wing. And I know they're not showing up very much but on the real moth they don't show up very much. And so I feel that that's just going to work fine. I'm not even splitting the stitch at the moment. I'm actually just taking the tiniest little stitch up again. I think before I finish the wing with the colours, I need to set this wing in the right place. Otherwise, I'll find it difficult to make the wings the same. I'm just going to get this thread up. And I'll place that wing and get it tacked down and then I can start bringing them to life. I think I'm not quite sure where that's going to go to so I'm leaving that there. Just going to look at it straight on to make sure I've got it even because I'm working a little bit sideways with the camera being right in the middle. So I just need to check that I'm doing it right. I think so. I'm going to pick up the brown again and I'm going to start and put the little tiny pieces along the bottom of this wing. I can check where they are by using my pattern. So I'm right exactly. One, two, three, four, five to the end. I'm a sort of triangular, so I'm going to do a central tall stitch and then two smaller ones each side and then move over to do the next one and I'll start with the tall middle stitch each time. Okay, so I've got the little markings along the bottom of there and now I know that the brown actually it gets quite dark but I'm just going to use the same one it's going to go right up the side of here it curves around here and I wonder if I need to, whether I stitch it or get a piece of piece of rusty fabric. 
think I might do both. So I think I'm going to cut a piece out of this really dark rusty bit. I've cut the two pieces of fabric out of my rusty pieces. If you don't have any rusty fabric and you don't have any fabric of the suitable colour, bring in the ink tents or the acrylic paints again and just paint yourself up a little bit. You'll know from that you'll get the perfect colour. And so I'm just going to tack that down. Actually needs a little bit of a darker colour which I might bring in. But I think once it's once it's on here I can then do a bit more with this brown before I change change colours. And so this brown is going to continue right up the edge of the wing. There's another little piece of pattern that comes in here and so I can, I've got a chance of doing it. don't want to cut out another piece, they're getting a bit too small so I'm just going to fill this in with the brown thread but I, I've drawn it with pencil just to give myself a chance of making the right shape and I'm going to make sure that the stitches lie in the, di the same direction that the scales are on the wing and what I'll do I'll just put these on loosely to finish this thread off it gives me the shape which I can thicken up in a minute but I also need to change the colour I think and just go one or two shades darker I'll use this one uh, single strand still I'm going to start right at the bottom here and just put this darker strand along the edge and definitely, definitely at this edge. A little dark bit here. I need this to be dark and then this whole piece is quite dark. There's actually a white marking on here that always has always looked very pale blue to me. So I'm going to use the palest blue that I can find to put the white marking in the middle of this piece. Okay, I'm gonna snip up to here. And I've got a little little beauty spot on this bit, shoulder, to start and shape the, shape the head while I'm on. Well, I've finished off the other wing to match and put the yellow veins on. That's just a bit too boring to have it on camera all the time. Um, and now I've got a little extra pattern to put on here. There are like little semi-circle crescents and I've ummed and ahed about the colour for ages and I've at last decided to settle on this greyish green which I don't feel is right but the silver greys are definitely not right and it's sort of a bluish greenish something. Anyway I'm going to see if this very pale greyish green will work and I don't I just need to suggest it really but he's looking really nice with his markings I hope I'm convincing anybody who says they don't like moths how just how beautiful they really are so with my single greyish green I'm going to try just like little crescents I almost feel as if I could do fly stitch, but maybe, maybe not. So I want the stitches to be straight really. I want them to follow the the wing veins. I'm not going to put too many in because I don't want it to be a really hard line. Almost like I just need the suggestion of the markings, I think. The 
think this greenish grey is working. I was worried it was going to look too green, but it doesn't. So I'm happy that it's doing what I was hoping it would do. I'll get all these bits in and then I'll come back to do the white markings here and possibly the rest of the legs. I've got all of these lines in. I just need to do the little white patch that's here. But it actually always looks to me like blue. So I've actually found the palest of pale blues in Among My Tango. And it was, there's already two strands there. So I'm just going to leave it at two strands because I'm putting this over the top of the brown. I'm just going to see if I can carefully get a little patch in here. Just I need to make sure that the border stays brown if I can. It's just tiny, but it's a distinctive little marking. I'm not pulling these stitches too tight. I don't want them to sink into the stranded cotton I've got underneath. I want them to really be a little distinctive marking. That's the best I can do. i do the same on the other side. I've just finished the final bit of stitching. I've put the legs on, so the front two legs go forward and they're mainly white with a little bit of rust on. And I've got his feelers which come down the side of his head. And I've just used a little bit of ink tents to shade the under wings. And I'm really happy with how that's turned out. So I'm ready to finish it all off. I'm going to take it out of the hoop. And I decided that I wanted to name, put the names on, but in the style of the old Victorian displays of moths and butterflies. I've got my Stettler fine liner, which is a permanent pen. Um, except it was a bit, there was my practice. Opis the Graptis lute Luteola and it was a little bit going through the fabric a bit but anyway I've decided I'm not going to be pretentious I'm going to just put the common name on so brimstone moth and I'll just go for it maybe maybe this fabric's not doing very well I think I'm going to have to do this again actually. Normally the Stettler doesn't um, wick through the fabric. It definitely is. I cut it out but I don't actually think I'm going to iron this one on. Clear my, clear my board a bit. I'll get you a top down view if I can. I don't know how people do top down views. I can't seem to do it at all. Maybe I don't have the right equipment. Anyway. So well, that's what I'm aiming for, but I'm not very happy with the way the ink's going through there. It doesn't normally spread and it definitely has. So I might just have to get myself a new pen. Maybe this, I don't know, or maybe the nib is getting used a bit. Well, after a bit of experiment, I realised that it was the fabric and not my pen that was at fault. I found another piece of fabric and I've actually printed out the name and got it ironed on. So that is the finish of my brimstone moth embroidery. I hope you all enjoyed that. I really enjoyed stitching that and I feel that I'm going to be maybe doing some different things with the moths. I really fancy making a brooch something I can wear on a lapel or in a dress or something. And so that'll mean that I can do some stump work to do the wings. And that'll be really interesting, but probably not for a little while yet. I have other projects to do first. And so it's not likely to be a moth next Sunday. I might be putting the birds together into their wall hanging. And so that's quite possibly going to be next Sunday's video um, but I'll just see how I get on with things because there's quite a lot to do 
um, post Christmas and post New Year, just getting myself into some organisation. I hope you'll subscribe and uh, keep watching along with what I'm doing and watch another video because there's, there's now getting to be quite a few and yeah I think um, I think all the comments I've been getting lately uh, new people coming on and looking at my my previous videos I've been getting some really lovely comments so thank you everyone very much I really appreciate them and I do absolutely hand on heart I read every single one so thank you for that and I'm just going to say happy stitching and I'm so pleased that you're all enjoying the beginning of the stitch journal and I've already done this Wednesday's. I think you're going to like it. So I will see you on Wednesday. Okay, thanks for watching. Please watch another video if you would like to and bye from Marion's World. See you next time. Thank you very much to every single one of you. Bye.